Uh, I want to make sure we are live. Uh, and hello, everyone. If you're joining us on Facebook, I'm going to just wait a couple seconds to see if anyone joins us. And I will introduce. So for those of you that have not joined us before, uh, this is winter camp for Racing Magpie. And the goal of this programming is just to think through a Cheti Shakoi livelihood. So we invite different community members, artists, culture bearers who are doing really great work in our communities to uplift uh, the different aspects of art, language, culture, and uh, community engagement. So today we have Elena and her partner who will be sharing about cradle board practices, but also just uplifting Ochekti Shakoin health and wellness. So I will turn it over to you all to more formally introduce yourselves and just get started on this week's winter camp. Oh, Midakiapi, Elena Eagle Show the Machiapi. You have chante washena pe choose up be was the acta lakota mokochi king eos lata kitta haska mataha uh michinchiki dopa tewichawaki hila uh yeah hi everybody my name is elena eagleshield i am a mother of four uh we have four kids <laughs> i am currently a phd candidate at the university of washington i am also the co-executive director of the miniwichoni health circle and my husband and I have our own business. It's called um, Owotala Igluha. <laughs> and it's just kind of what we do um, for, we, we do teaching, we share lessons, we create cradle boards. We, you know, just a number of things that we do. We just started our business probably two years ago. Um, and so we're new to that part of it and, and just very excited to be here. I love racing magpie and the work that they're doing. Um, and I just love Clementine. She's just such a BA scholar and activist and, and amazing Lakota Lia and, um, happy to have her part of my circle. And so I'll let my husband introduce himself. Hello. Hey, <laughs> my name is Red Rock Eagle Stunning Perkins. I'm an enrolled member of the three affiliated tribes on my dad's side. And on my mom's side, I'm <clears throat> she's an enrolled member of the Yankton Sioux tribe. So I am Lakota or Nakota, Yankton Sioux, and Arikara. And like Elena said, uh, parent to four babies. And these, yeah, growing up. Uh, I grew up traditionally um, learning our tradition and our culture, and it was something that was normalized for me to grow up in, and I didn't realize it until I moved off reservation and realized the, uh, the two worlds that we had to live in when I was a teenager, and so being able to create these cradle boards and things that our people used a long time ago and still use today has been amazing and being able to share that with other families and other parents to help them with their bringing up their kids has been awesome. Mm -hmm. Yay. So we're going to share a little bit today about cradle boards. Um, we're just kind of winging it. I, I move, my brain goes all over. I'm like, should I create a presentation? Should I <laughs> um, show a demo? Should we carry a baby in there? <laughs> Just trying to think of all the ways to show you all our process. And so I think we'll just start by sharing a little bit about how we even came to to learn about cradle boards. And then we'll show you a few and then also show you some measurements of how we cut them out and how we put them together. Um, so we've been making them for almost four years now. We it actually in 2019, um, we or the beginning of 2020, we found out we were having our third baby. And we had really, since our, since our second baby, actually, we really wanted to make a cradle board. Um, we were excited. We wanted to learn how, but we didn't know how. And so my mom actually experimented with one of my baby's old jackets, like a little Pendleton jacket. Remember, you could get them at the powwow, <laughs> little tiny Pendleton jackets. Um, so we cut it up and made a little toy one. 
and just messed around with it. But then we didn't know how to do it at that time. And Rhetoric and I both grew up um, in cradle boards. My cradle board's right there. It's like a cloth one. I don't think we brought Red Rocks in here, but his was, mm, yeah, I got it. <laughs> his was more of like a, um, a bay or like a, like, I don't know, I guess it would be more of a, a framed cradle board where that's like a soft cradle board or whatever, just with material. But his had like leather and it had the frames. Mine didn't have like the runners that you see on that one. Mine didn't have those runners and somebody embroidered like two feathers on the side and, um, and so my dad loved sharing stories about, I was my dad's first kid. He was in his um, like middle forties when he had me and he, you know, grew up real traditional. And so he really was excited to share the cradle board um, with his kids. And he just talks about how cute it was when I would cry or when I was frustrated, like I would just go back and lay in that cradle board. And I thought it was like an exaggeration. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know if kids really make, connections like that but but you know thinking of it now it was like probably like a blanket babies love blankets or love those connections or things like that but I didn't know enough about it back then and so fast forward to beginning of 2020 when we were having our third baby we were like excited we're like we're in a space now where I would really like to learn how to make a cradle board and so I was reaching out to people who I had seen had cradle boards um and they just didn't know. They were all like, I'm, I don't know. I just winged it. I don't have any specific measurements. And I was like, well, can you go measure it? <laughs> can you go just take a measure and just share? It? And, and it was just hard. And so now like, um, a lot of times if people, you know, like message me, I'll just send them pictures of like a ruler beside our cradle board and show them how we, you know, how this is how we measured it. We didn't really have like a foolproof way. Um, and so shortly after we found out we were pregnant and we we're, you know, we kind of went and picked out beads and we were just kind of excited. Then the pandemic hit. And at the time we were living in Seattle. And so we didn't know um, what to do. And so we just kind of booked it home. Uh, and there was a lot of like, we we're involved in community work here. And we were learning that there were moms that were having to birth their babies alone in the hospitals because they didn't have um nobody could go in with them because of just the lockdown and just all the things that were happening and a few instances where the mom and their baby were contracting covid and at the time it was just so scary and so we didn't know <clears throat> what to do and so we kind of started to prepare for a home birth and i remember we ended up getting a hold of a um a midwife who is married to red rock's cousin um she's not native but she has been married into the family for like 15 or so years. And so she um, knew a lot about protocol and different things. And so she basically like just treated it beautifully, like a ceremony for us and um, didn't charge us or anything. And I just felt so beautiful, you know, it just felt so beautiful. And I remember her um, coming and sitting with us. We had just gotten home. It was probably like March or something. Um, just gotten home. It was COVID was starting to come here on in, in North Dakota. And I remember sitting with her and she's like, so how do you want your birth to go? And I was like, I don't know, like, I don't know, probably a teepee or <laughs> I was like making these jokes and she was just looking at me seriously. And she's like, it could be whatever you want. You know, you can have that. And I just realized that there was like a lot of shame and things I was working through as, as, you know, knowing traditions, understanding our way of life, but, but almost feeling like it did have to be in those two worlds. Like Red Ark was talking about, like, um, I also at one point wanted to be a doctor. And so just this real met, my mom was a nurse for 30 years, you know? Um, so just growing up in this really like medicalized way of thinking that it was almost like traditions were separate from those things. And so I, I almost started to spiral. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. And so one day I was just like, let's just do it. Let's just pick up this cradle board and let's start working on it. Um, Cause there was really nothing else we could have done. And so what we did first was. We just think, researched pictures of different cradle boards that we found on the internet. And then I had a few, I didn't have um, the one I was in when I was a baby at the time, but I had pictures of it. And we didn't have that one either. My dad found it later. Yeah. He found it after we finished the, the, our cradle board, but um, we just kind of researched and went off pictures 
of all these different styles of cradle boards and basically from memory too because uh, the one I was in we had our second baby in as well when he was born but <clears throat> with a lot of them that we've seen they usually end up being too short for the babies and so like they get like a month old and by that time they're too long for it and they can't stay it anymore and so from there we ended up looking at different styles and then Elena went into the research part of it and <laughs> got some like uh, newborn clothes three months six month and 12 months old clothes and kind of laid them out and then research like the size of the baby's head and how like they grow like they're not average, just their head <laughs> not just their head but like their whole their whole body <laughs> like the average of like the size of them by the time they're 12 months and then our babies were like between 21 and 22 inches so we're like it has to be at least that long at birth and then think, and then we start looking like each month the baby will grow like half an inch or, you know, things like that. And so that's how we ended up coming up with our size. And so, yeah. So, yeah, we just winged it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> winged it, but we started to track the measurements. And so um, we ended up making the, the back probably like between 10 and 11 inches. Um, I think now we have it at, I don't know. Do you have the one you drew on? Yeah. It's pretty this one? So we have, um, we were making it, we're, we'll show you guys the measurements of how. This is our template now. So I wrote template on there. And then we just started writing the measurements here. So from this side to this side, it's 10 inches. And then from the bottom to the top, it's a total of 26 inches. And these are the smaller ones we use. So like the big giant beaded ones we use, we do 30 or 29 or 30 inches. Um, and those ones our babies have been in, like our boy was in that one for 13 months and our girl was in that one for 16 months. And then we do these, these ones, 26 inches, because we we realized that with the Pendleton, it'll go around completely like with a, a standard, um, what is it, like a twin? Full size, I think. Full size or twin, whatever the, the standard Pendleton that you drape over your shoulder. <laughs> you get a giveaway, the giveaway <laughs> size ones. <laughs> That fits all the way around that cradle board um, at the 26 inch. And so, like he said, we would measure the shirt um, of like a six or 12 month old. I can't remember. And so that's how we made it 10 inches because we're like, it has to at least fit, you know, their shoulders. And so they're nice and comfortable. Um, and then it tapers down just barely. We've had so many variations of it, like tapering down a lot, just being a big square um we've tried different ways of doing it and and this has been our like perfect template so yeah. far so we got rid of the, like the corners because we found out that as you use it the corners end up tearing through the material and like uh, making holes basically so we did our best to round it off on all the sides so that way it doesn't we don't run into that problem and then we <clears throat> started to use like a, um a wool or a Pendleton fabric for the backing so that way, because we used fabric for for our cradle board here, like cotton, yeah, cotton, and that ended up like kind of just tearing right along the um the board itself, and so just like kind of um yeah. trial and error things along the way, and then like we even with the runners we we didn't have a specific one we just kind of taped a board to the backboard and said hey that looks like a good good length for it <laughs> doesn't look too <laughs> short or too long and it ends up being 10 inches longer than the board so and so we ended up doing that and then I usually end up doing like a wood burning on it and kind of decorating that way and using tacks for designs mm -hmm. and yeah we just went through a lot of trial and error and are slowly perfecting and getting the measurements written down so that way if we don't do one for a while. We're not scrambling again and relearning how to do it. Yeah. And so the beaded ones are also different than the Pendleton ones. And so, like I said, we make the Pendleton ones a little bit shorter just because the blanket, the giveaway size blanket, like fits perfectly around it. Um, and then we also, so how we do it here, I'll show you. We have a few pieces cut out. So we had a template that we would use. Um, and so we kind of do the hooded part. I don't know if you can tell the hood. I don't know how we ended up doing that. We I think from the pictures, we thought it was like a hood. And so that's what this part is. 
So when it comes out, the the top kind of oh, um sticks out a little bit more. And I really like it now, but at first I just I wasn't sure because it, it wasn't, you know, how the ones we've seen online. Um, so it just kind of looks like a hood. And <laughs> rank guys actually dropped our baby off something before. <laughs> and that protected them. It was like stuck out a little bit more. And so their face was like nice and snug in there. And um they didn't hit their head or they didn't come out of it. And so I think other they, they stayed asleep. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of moved around and kept sleeping. So But I think like other nations, they have those like wood things that go around for that reason, you know, so that they wouldn't hit or or hurt their heads or whatever. Um and so when we did the the beaded ones, we had no idea how big it was gonna be or 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 how to do it. And so we kind of measured it. I think it's like, do you want to bring one over? Do we have a, a ruler over there? I think we made it like eight inches on the sides um, because we were kind of thinking that we'd have a big pillow inside of it. And so these right here, these sides are like eight inches, I believe. Yep, about eight inches high. And then it tapers up here to like 11 and a half inches, I believe. Oh, 11 inches. So it starts at 11 inches here, and then on the side where you could see that hood part, it tapers down to eight inches and then it goes all the way down. Um, and so what I would do was measure that part out first and then I would just start taping graph paper together. So a whole bunch of graph paper, lay it onto the, how we would do it was pellin. We would use pellin to start, which pellin is that um, like thick material that a lot of people use for like beading. It's this kind of, yeah, it's this kind of like thick material you can get at Joanne or like a fabric store. Um, I don't know if we need to bring it closer or not, <laughs> but it's just like this thick material. It's called Pellin. I don't remember the exact number. 72. 72. <laughs> Is it the quilting one or? Um, I don't think so. It's like a yellow. Oh, yeah, right here. Pellin. <laughs> Pellin 72. It's like the yellow one. So if you ever want to go get that, pick it up. 70. The one I got was 72. Oh, 70, okay. 70. 70 or 72. So it really, it doesn't have to be fusible, but we kind of used it um, to bead on. And then we also use it in the Pendleton ones. We double it so it can be reinforcing. So like how we get these beads to stick up is we use um, rawhide on the inside. But on the blanket ones, we just use double pellin, that, that stuff that we just showed you. And so we would put um, graph paper together or first we'd cut out the pellin once we measured it, 11 inches at the very top and then tapering down to eight inches. Then I'd put graph paper on it, make sure it was all even, um, just taped a bunch of graph paper together. And then I would start drawing my designs. And I feel like that was the hardest part. I like asked my dad for designs. We tried asking about like, um, one of my sisters, Kayla Looking Horse said that her mom shared with her that the reason that they put like a red and she told me this after I did this design specifically. Um, but she said long time ago, her mom told her that they used to have like a red line all around it to like represent the bloodline or a strong bloodline. And so I thought that was beautiful. So we did it on the orange one. Um, but this one, I, I tried asking my dad about like if we had like family designs or anything. Um and he has a pipe bag from his gr like grandpa or great grandpa that he had restored. And it had a couple of designs like these boxes. Um, I think that was it. it, had a few others, but it just, it was just trial and error. <laughs> we just put a bunch of different designs and um, I wish that, you know, there was more of a story I could tell you about it, but I just feel like these designs just came to us. Um, we really wanted to have Buffalo on it. Uh, and it's a funny thing is, is our, our boy, he's just really rough and tumble. And when he falls, he always like lands on his shoulder and slides and <laughs> gets up. He's all crazy. But so we call him our little Buffalo and we ended up putting Buffalo on his and we didn't, you know, know at the time, but I, and I also wanted teepees on it and stars because I wanted him to know like his, his relations to his people and, and just be connected to the star nation. And so once I got the designs 
and we beaded like probably this top part. Once we beaded more of this top part, um, then I had three sisters that I sent it to because it was during the pandemic. And so it was just a crazy time. But I had the designs picked out, had most of the colors picked out that they could follow. Um, and then I mailed it to them. And so my I first mailed it to my sister in Portland, um, Cinnamon Spear or Cinnamon Kill first. And she beaded a whole bunch on it. Her and her family beaded a bunch. And so I would send them a package with all of the beads inside, um, a little gift for them and just a card thanking them um, and then an offering for them. And then they would beat it. And then I had the address and stuff for the next person to send it to and a gift and everything in there. And so she would roll it back up because it was just rolled at the time. She would roll it back up, um, send it to my sister in New York, um, Kayla Looking Horse. And she worked on it. And then they, when she was done doing, you know, whatever she wanted to do on her, I felt was, was done on it. Then she sent it to my sister, Cheyenne Brady in um, Newtown. And then she worked on it some. And then after that, when we got it back, it was like pretty much done. And so all we had to do was put it together and it just was beautiful. It was a beautiful process. Um, my husband and my younger brother worked on the wood. And so he figured out like, how to do like a backpack on it. So he uses rawhide. He does it differently now. So he does the rawhide the opposite way and we can show you on another one. Um, but he basically sews the backpack to the rawhide and then this whole thing gets put together with, with rawhide. So we don't put screws on our um, cradle boards at all. Just safety, I don't know, more tradition. <laughs> I think for me, it was more keeping it more traditional material instead of using screws and nails and things like that. I wanted to keep it as much as I could with traditional cradle boards. And I know a long time ago, they didn't have nails or things like that. So I decided to use um, leather because I do a lot of work with uh, rawhide and leather and stuff like that. So I know how strong it is. And so I was like... <laughs> Strips of leather will definitely hold it together and it will be safe enough to hold the baby and carry it. And so that's what I chose to do. And and again, we had no idea how to do any of this. So like even the cradle board, we'll show you how we put it together. Um, but so now how he does it is he puts the rawhide underneath and sews it that way. So it doesn't like pull and it's just a little stronger. And then he connects it with a piece of leather so he sews the leather onto the wood, pokes a hole through and makes sure that it's connected to the board and everything's connected. And then sews the bottom of the strap onto that leather. And I've never done this part. <laughs> I don't know how hard it is. <laughs> um, uh, it's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> but so how we did it is, I don't know if you could see this board. So basically we create a sleeve so we measure the board so that it'll fit exactly. And he'll show you an example. Oh yeah, right so here. We started to work into toy cradle boards for babies to have carry and play like with their dolls with it. And so this is what she's talking about. Like the backboard here slides right into the Yeah, so we the sleeve. We measure a sleeve based off the board. So we just draw really close all the way around the material, um, then leave like an inch or two. And then we sew the sleeve probably like halfway. And then when we get to the outside material, here's the cradle board part. Um, so with these ones, we don't do a hood because we don't got to worry about baby dolls. <laughs> we don't got to worry about them falling out. Um, and so we don't do the hood, we just do it straight here. But we usually do like an insert, the outer the outer part of the board, which I don't know if you wanna show them one more time. Oh. No, that right there. Yeah. So here's the, the outer material, then the inner material, and then we do a sleeve. So we measure the board and we do a sleeve and we basically sew all the pieces together. Um, we don't have one that's halfway done, but 
we just basically pin them together down one side and then down the other side and then sew them together. And then once it's here, then you could fit the board inside and it's super snug. And so that's how we did it. I have no idea how other people do it or how they like connect it to the board, but we put the board on the inside and then from the outside, um, the board has its holes and everything cut already. And then once it's inside, um, then the runners get attached to the board. So the runners will go like this. And then I already pre-drilled the holes so they line up, which is something I learned to do. So I use <laughs> this double-sided tape here to hold the boards together in place. So that way when I drill all the holes, they line up. Because in the beginning, it was like drilling one set at a time and then slowly trying to line them up and do the next one. And <laughs> it ends up turning out crooked. <laughs> But this way I found works because they all line up and then you don't have to worry about uh, running into that problem anymore. Want to show them the other panel or like how those other boards going? Those panels right there? Right there. What? So I'm working on this one now, but then so the holes will go here, here, and the holes all line up together. So I don't have to worry about that. And then they go on the bottom here. And then this is where like we hook the backpacks on and because it's a baby one, I think we still, um, we still do the leather. We, it's just like a, a, just a miniature one. We do all the same things for the cradle board. Um, but yeah, so that's how we ended up learning is we just created the sleeve and then we would sew all the parts together. And then, um, then everything else from here is by hand. So how you enclose. So we have little baby straps here that will cut off and do the same thing like with the big ones and then they attach to the back of those do we have waiting with this credit board or is it downstairs okay so once it gets here and the board is inside i'll show you really quick so once it gets to this point and the board is inside you can't use the sewing machine anymore for this be just because it's um so from here is where you have to start doing it by hand. So once it gets to this point, then you just kind of, this is the sleeve on the inside. This is the outer part of the cradle board. This is the pellin that kind of gives it reinforcement. And then this is the inner part. So you just kind of fold it under and then you just go back and forth and sew that all the way around, sew it around on this side. And then that's how you close it. And then from there, you'll sew your leather onto the front. Um, oh yeah, here. Here's our baby girl's cradle board. So we did the we did the hood here, and it's just kind of overboard for a little toy one. <laughs> um, or I guess you can't be too overboard. Hey. But so he did the same thing. Everything's just miniature. So he sewed the leather onto the wood, sewed the backpack straps to it, he even did the rawhide. We still put it together with rawhide. Um, and so from here, all of this is sewn by hand and then you sew it together. See, it's kind of oosh right there. Sew it over here. And then we sew the leather on by hand, then cut the holes and then sew it together. And our daughter usually helps us and beads this part for ones that we make for other people. Um, but yeah, this is just a small version of how we do it, but we've kind of been perfecting it in our own way. And really all of it is measured based off this board. So no matter the size of the board, everything will go, you'll measure the sleeve here, and then you'll measure this based off of if it goes around the board. So yeah, so that's how we've learned to do it. And it's just been a really cool process. I feel like we've pretty much got it down now. Um, like I said, mine was just like a cloth one when I was growing up. Red Rocks was more like a bag which it looked like, I don't know if you want to. So this is the pillow insert that we put in them for the babies. So that way, if they have an accident or something, you could take it out and wash it and then put it back in. You don't have to worry about washing the whole cradle board. Because <laughs> we're fresh out of moss. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it's just been, it's been a process. So when we finished our very first one, um, I was so grateful that we sent it all over. We sent it to our friends and 
our family and so so many people put their prayers and love into it and then when we got it back we finished it like a week before he was born um a couple days a couple days <laughs> yeah and it was like <laughs> it and even that was trial and error like we had to take it apart and add a piece to the bottom because he ended up you know getting too big for it but it was the only way he would sleep for a long time yeah so with his on the bottom from like the extra added piece where the fringe is we had that just sewn flat and so we ended up noticing that it was kind of pressing on his feet down and so we ended up putting another piece of rawhide and adding that extra length to it because his is kind of more square at the bottom too and so we ended up putting that piece of rawhide to help keep it standing up so that would give his feet room to move around and not get squished yeah and so through the process we just learned so much like um heard stories from other people of of just you know cradle boards and how we use them and um I started to share videos on TikTok and for a while people were like freaking out um that I had a baby in there and that the baby what what if the baby is claustrophobic when they grow up or just all these things and so it was a um crazy to see like how many people just don't understand like our indigenous technologies and all the beautiful things that that our people were so intelligent they didn't just do things just to do them you know we wouldn't keep them in there 24 hours a day there was a time and a place and um and obviously there were other things like you know, through the research that I've been doing too, that there were things that they would do, um, you know, some, some communities to like flatten their head or whatever. Um, but we, we obviously have like soft pillows and things like that nowadays. And, um, when our baby was tinier, remember those car seat pillows that go around baby's heads or whatever, we would end up doing that in the cradle board. Cause otherwise their head was just kind of flopping all over. Um, and we had the backpacks and, we knew right away that the babies couldn't just hold their heads up if they, you know, were in there. And so we know now and we tell families like, don't hold, don't, if you do have a backpack, if they do do the backpack option, like don't hold your baby in a backpack until they're at least two months old and can hold their head up. Um, if they could do it earlier then yeah, just use your best interest, but, or your best judgment, but just things like that. Like we just learned a lot through the process of, um, like how beautiful and important these technologies were. And we got to see how important they were for our kids because our our boy, even our girl, we were looking at this orange one recently. Like um, about five days ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so just like how Elena said, when she was a baby, how her dad shared that story of her crawling back into her cradle board and like her thinking that it was like an exaggeration. <laughs> But seeing it like just within this past week, our youngest baby crawling back into hers, we took it off the wall and we're looking at it and we had it laying down and she comes running over and she like starts untying it and she like starts putting her legs in and like <laughs> she like squished, it, squished her whole body in there and she's like, like this, like not even able to stretch her legs out, but she like laid in there for like a full minute or two and like she was just like <laughs> happy to be back in there. yeah tucked her little arms in and she's just looking <laughs> at us oh it just was so cute to see and and so that's why that one over there <laughs> oh. freaking oh. 40 inch one or 42 inch because <laughs> when when our when our girl was born our boy kept trying to get in hers and he kept crying for it and so we made him a big <laughs> 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 holy crap just big old guy um but we're like it's definitely important to have those runners, especially if they're like bigger babies, um, just because it stabilizes it too. And and then we learn like you can prop them up better, you know, when they have those runners and they're just more stabilizing for the um, for <laughs> the board and the baby. And so, yeah, so it's just it's been a learning journey. We've made probably over 30 of them now, maybe more than that. We've made a lot of toy ones. Um we don't necessarily like have that up for business yet. I think I still work through it in my head. Like if that um, should be a thing, we gift a lot of them and we also sell them. And, you know, it's just, it's something I just still, obviously people use their skills for, you know, make earrings and all these things, but I'm just like, oh, if I won the lotto, <laughs> ever did win the lotto, I'd, you know, make open a factory and make them for every single baby. I just feel like they're so important. And so anybody who wants to learn, I try to teach them 
um, even if it's just sending pictures. Um, our interns at our org, the Minnie Tony Health Circle, we've been just cutting them out, showing them how to cut them out and just prepare them for families that we serve. And so it's been, yeah, it's been really beautiful. Yeah, um, got to make at least two this past couple weeks. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like she said, we cut out like at least six, seven of them like that are all ready to kind of be put together. And so we got to see families kind of work together and walk them through it. Mm -hmm. And we started kind of cutting some out on our own so that way we could have them more readily available if if um someone asked for one, which we end up trying to always gift it to them because we know how much it's helped our babies like with sleeping, taking naps and helping us as parents to give us that time to like clean up or rest. And and I know um, with both of our babies when they were younger and in them, especially for Elena in the middle of the night when she was breastfeeding them, like when that was all they would eat would, would breastfeed and she needed that break, I would put them in there in the middle of the night and just sit out in the like living room or out on the chair and rock them back to sleep. And they would sleep for like three hours in there. And I, that was kind of like my time to bond with them and just like <laughs> stare at them as they slept. And I also gave her the time to get some rest and, and get that time to recover too. And so knowing, knowing like how much it's helped us, we definitely like to help other parents, especially with newborn babies and, and things like that to help kind of relieve some of that for them mm -hmm. and give them that extra support in that way. Yeah. And so through this process, I actually, cause I'm um, doing my dissertation and through my whole um, PhD program, I haven't, um, I've kind of followed what it is that's already happening in our communities and then have written about that. I haven't necessarily, um, you know, designed or developed studies and then measured whatever that, you know, like it's already things that are happening and I get a, I get a check and um, basically tell back to our community, like the beautiful things that they're already doing. They're already engaged in theorizing. They're already engaged in, you know, all of these conceptual frameworks and ways of viewing, you know, the, our worlds through our like Lakot Wichoch, our Lakota way of life. And, and so it just, to me, felt natural that through my program that I would already do something that I was so passionate about. And so I focused on um, making cradle boards. And so kind of the word I'm pl I played off of for like this presentation is um, to each impa ungalhapi or to each impa galhapi, which is like cradle boarding is what I'm saying, but it's like enacting the cradle board or, you know, just kind of living into that cradle board um, because there's so many things that happen through the cradle board like we we are not just seeing cradle boards in pictures and museums or um on the internet like we we get to have these things in our homes and have them be fully functional it's not just something that hangs on a wall or you know is um yeah it's it's something and we even take these anytime we've had gatherings with other families we take our cradle boards and so anytime a baby needs a nap or something we're like honest to God, this guy's the baby whisperer. <laughs> and so he'll put babies in there and rock them to sleep and they'll just be out for a long time. And, um, and so just like sharing those, those things that, that we, you know, that these are living and they're fully functional and, um, that that's super important for, for us and our communities to, to be able to use these things. Like, yeah, there are baby wraps, there are swaddling things, there are baby carriers, all these beautiful things, but we also had technology that, um, served our communities in ways that our people knew exactly how to use them you know it wasn't like they were so oblivious and they kept them in there 24 hours a day or you know there was a time and a place and when the babies cry we take them out or if they you know they still reach all the milestones that they need to reach our babies still crawled when it was their time they still sat up when it was their time and they would still sleep in the cradle board and so um that was something that we kind of found through through my study um, was that there's this indigenous futurisms that was continuing to happen is that these things are continuing in our communities now. Um, there was also like a centering of family that was happening or even chosen family. A lot of the people who were a part of the study, there was eight families that were a part of it. Um, and they were sharing, you know, what they were learning and they were talking about how stingy people are with their knowledge and 
how they really wanted to be able to help other families and other moms and other dads to like prepare for their babies by helping them make cradle boards. Um, there was also space for us to like return to ceremonies. You know, we started to have baby welcoming ceremonies. And so families would come be a part of that after being a part of like creating cradle boards and, and being in these circles. They were like, I didn't even know they had, you know, we had ceremonies like this. I didn't even know that um, I could even sew or I didn't even know that I I, I could make something so beautiful and, and they did so good, you know? And so it just was like, a really beautiful space for us to continue to learn together, share these things that are, you know, have always been a part of our communities. It wasn't like we just created these things out of no, you know, a dream or whatever, um, which we were having dreams that were guiding us, which was so beautiful. But but these are things that have always been in our community. And so that was really important um, to share. And so I don't know if you want to share um, your experience with like seeing the families or... <clears throat> I think for me, like how she was talking about the baby welcoming ceremonies, like from my point of view, like a lot of the the parents and like the ones that are like getting ready for the baby, they would be like, I don't know what to do or whatever. And and part of it is you're um you prophesize over your babies and you wanna kind of prophesize and tell what you want for that baby and what you kind of show them the love and express it to them <clears throat> and every single time each parent gets like a big lump in their throat and they start crying because like they're starting to like realize how much they love this baby even though like sometimes the baby hasn't even came here yet or even even when they're older and here like being able to speak that over them you could see that power power of their words and how how much they love their their babies like it always comes out mm -hmm. <laughs> like and then visiting with them after they're like I didn't even know I was gonna cry or mm -hmm. I was gonna say I, I'm not gonna cry or I'm not gonna do this but in the end like you could always <laughs> it always ends up happening with with um like these ceremonies like with our babies and even like when you're visiting with them and when they're we were teaching the families to make them and walking them through like you could see that love that they have for their babies mm -hmm. and like how much they're like taking the time to get certain things right and make it as perfect as they could for their baby mm -hmm. and so like seeing that much and kind of like giving giving their love a more visual appearance oh, yeah. uh, or like a physical mm -hmm. appearance for the babies like I love my baby so much I want to hold them all the time so I'm going to create this this cradle board and build it and so that way it can hold my baby and they could see that as they get older I built this for them to hold them so that way <clears throat> when I'm not there holding them they'll have this mm -hmm. and things like that mm -hmm. like when I said like we had dreams of our of our babies before they came and like things shared with us and so like with our last one here like we knew that it was going to be a baby girl <laughs> and so like as we we're doing the cradle board we we're like well what design should we come up with this time and so for us we ended up picking these two um women on horses and so we wanted to honor like the the matriarchal side of both of our families and so for for me like we went back as far as as we could in the family tree and visiting with one of my um aunties she's she we were on the phone for hours and she was going through like my family tree with me and and she's like went back so far and then she's like the last the only one I could tell you is that that goes as far back is where we come from she's like her name is floating ledge woman it's like that's where we our family comes from is this woman here and from there is where like our family tree starts she said uh, that's as far back as I can recall or that was shared with me and so that's why we did that one and then the other one was for Elena's family for um her great great grandmother who was in the battle of little bighorn and so in that battle she was one of the few women that that went into battle with with um everybody and so her name she ended up receiving a name from that battle as well and then they honored her too 
And so we wanted to <clears throat> kind of honor, honor that because we knew we were having a baby girl. And so we wanted to kind of honor that matriarchal of our family. And so we ended up doing a design of two women on horses. So yeah, for one... I don't know if you could see them. Hey. Here, I'll go grab it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just not going to get up and get it. <laughs> just um, well, we're, we're about 45 minutes in. I just wanted to share some quick um, affirmations y'all are receiving on Facebook. So Dusty said, hey, Mashke, good to see you talking about this. Kobe said, I love this. Thank you for sharing. My son had a cradle board as a baby and he loved it. Amanda shared, this is beautiful. Padamiaye for sharing your art and knowledge. And it's just been um, really exciting to hear you hear you both reflect on this and sharing all the wonderful crafts. So if there's anyone um, on Facebook Live or here in Zoom with us that wants to ask a question, please just drop it in the chat or... Um, we're we're open now or you all could keep talking about like all the cool things that you've witnessed when you start sharing this with other people. I think I've really enjoyed hearing about the centering of family. Uh, I especially love the story of your son trying to crawl back into the, our <laughs> wanting his own cradle board with his little sister um, and then them trying to crawl back into it. I feel like I need a cradle board as an adult sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, somebody just hold me. <laughs> yeah, and we literally would take them everywhere for us. So I've traveled a lot over the past couple of years. And um, my kids, a lot of times, that's the only way that they would sleep when they were younger. And so I would take it on the plane with me. We would take it in the car with us. Um, and yeah, we just, it it's, you know, we obviously have to take everything off when we go through the airport, but they just send it through the scanner. And then usually when we're on the airplane, if it doesn't fit on top, unless it's a big airplane, then I just put it in like the, the coat closet um, and never check them just because I, I feel, you know, and I have fought a few people trying to make me check it <laughs> um, because it's, it, you know, it's so delicate and I've had banged up suitcases before and so no way I'm checking those things <laughs> so yeah I mean I would just if if you all have them continue to 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 use them and take up space and just you know keep being ourselves everywhere we go I can't see any of the questions so if there is any <laughs> <laughs> there is it no questions yet on Facebook um, I know we have a couple folks in the Zoom with us, but if what are you hoping? I know Elaine, probably this is a lot of pressure for you, but um, <laughs> like what are the what are the next steps? Right, I know you're finished writing this dissertation about this this praxis, but like in thinking about the future, right? You said this is reflecting like indigenous futurisms or Ocheti Shakoin futurisms, right? So what what are your hopes like? what's after this or is it just more cradle board making like what other things are you hoping to uh incorporate and and think about I feel like I'm oh are you <laughs> I really am interested in continuing to share you know all of these things that we're learning um and I don't know what that looks like yet I know we t um one of the things I really want to do is we want to make like a book about um these you know the cradle board and and a journey of like how, how a baby sees their world through the cradle board. Um, there are so many times we like, we'll prop up our baby or we've even hung ba baby in the, like the earth lodge before. And they're just so observant. And um, we were, we've been told by elders that like, that's their first way of learning, you know, they just observe and, and watch and, and so it was important for us to always have our babies close, either on our backs or propped up near us. And so I want to continue sharing those things and the importance of it. Because honestly, when I would share stuff on TikTok, people go ham. Like they're like, I'm going to call CPS. I'm going to, it doesn't bother me, you know, at all. Because I, I know it's like ignorance and people just not understanding at all. Um, you know, how intelligent and brilliant our people really are and, and were and, will continue to be and that the technologies we have are like, you know, so important for us to keep going and keep carrying forward. And so I want to keep, you know, making cradle boards and, and building them and I, maybe a, like having more of a um, 
streamlined process is not ideal. I don't know. People do it with clothes. <laughs> but but I want to continue to to like teach all the other things with it too. Like for instance, um we have a check bot ogunake on that on this cradle board. Um and hers we had to redo it. Um but this one's like the decoy. <laughs> and so there's like stories of of our people and how we protected our kids. You know, we would make two check bot ogunake and one of them would house the belly button. They always used to, oh, I sound weird. The belly button used to be attached to the cradle board. Um, and I don't know when the times changed, so it'd be good to like even learn that history of it. But we started to make decoy ones because of the, um, I don't know whether it's spirits or just people around us that have not, um, you know, who who have been influenced by by negativity or or any kind of darkness, but they started to go after babies who um because of their essence and because of their energy and so they would steal their their chekba oganake with their chekba in it and like basically use that power or whatever it is um that's one of the stories and so you make a decoy one without the belly button and keep that near the baby with like prayers and medicine in it um and then you keep the one with the belly button safe and so we keep it with all of our kids belly buttons in their own chekba oganake with my husband's um, pipe and his other sacred items and are just always kept sacred and always you know safe and and um, things like that and so there's just so many things we're learning we even made like a baby mobile <laughs> with like mm -hmm. different effigies and in rawhide and um, beaded the little plastic part oh our our boys awake um but yeah, so I, I would love to continue to make these things and, and just sharing what we're learning because I think there's a responsibility that when when our people have knowledge or teachings to to not be stingy with it and to share because it's meant for all of us to to each take it and take what take what feels right to us and, and then leave what doesn't, but just carry these things on in whatever way that feels right within our families or with our children. Um, and so I think we feel that responsibility really deeply and we, you know, we want to continue to, to carry these things forward so that, you know, we even involve, involve our kids in it. So our, our oldest usually beads, um, around that and our son likes to make bone necklaces and he makes drums and, um, there's things that, <laughs> that we want our, our kids to continue to take part of because I think in this world that's forever evolving and social media, you know, takes hold of our every, every waking thought and moment. Like we all panicked when Facebook shut down for a little bit today <laughs> that um, we know it's important to have these groundings in, and whatever that looks like. And so, so yeah, long answer, but we've, we want to continue to learn and share and, um, uphold our responsibility of, of passing all of the things on that we have. Oh, what's it called? I think too, a part of it too is creating the traditional toys for babies. Like she said, the baby mobile, but also like when we would do buffalo butcherings, like we had a both of our babies chewing on piece of the backstrap tied in, like as a teether, and that's what uh, they would do a long time ago. As as it wasn't just a one person job, or wasn't just the man's job or the woman's job. It was like the whole, the whole people as a whole would come together and take apart and help each other out. And so there would always be a baby in the camp or baby somewhere. And so like they would, we'd have all these things readily available for babies as we would do stuff and so being able to yeah like create even yeah like the little toy cradle boards for the babies and kind of bringing it to them so that way they can see and have their own um version of it of like being able to like enact like take like being like a like a parent like having their babies feeding them and things like that and normalizing it for them to see and it not just be a story and them having their own memories of yeah I used to have a little toy cradle board and I'd put my baby in there and I'd do all this like them having their own stories to share as they get older 
and then even creating like little rattles for them and things like that too. That's all. And I think that is another big part of it too is taking on like Lena said the like the roles of helping parents too, but also remembering the babies and creating stuff for them as well to help like the parents and the babies <laughs> keep keeping both occupied and giving them things tangible that they could take with them and and things like that. Mm -hmm. Thank you all so much. There's some more, um, I know there's some affirming comments here in the Zoom room, but also on Facebook, just some more data sh shared. Thank you for sharing. This is so beautiful. And I think um, it's just been a really great reflection to see your all's journey through this. Yay. Well, I appreciate um, you all, Racing Magpie, Clementine, Peter, everybody um, for inviting us. This has been really beautiful. Um, we, <laughs> our little failed podcast, just kidding. It's not failed. We're, we're going to revive it. We're Wait. taking a break right now. <laughs> a year long break. <laughs> we're revamping. <laughs> um, we were so, we're, we're just so excited to keep sharing these things. And so we started a podcast like last year um, and we were, just sharing about our birth journey, a little bit what we shared here, um, just about parenting. And um, at the time we were homeschooling our kids. And so it felt like there was so much that we were learning. Um, but we have too many kids to homeschool now. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, and so it's just been, yeah, we, we this has been fun. It, it's reminded us like we really love um, visiting and and we've been together for 13 years now, married for almost eight almost nine and so we're um we just we just love sharing we love learning together and um we just love our way of life so thank you all for listening to us yes, thank you thank you all for joining us and um we're this will obviously be available through racing my Kai's website and then um where can we find more information where can we follow you on tiktok or where can we find the podcast if you just want to close us out with like where we can um, follow your journey? Yay. So we have our podcast is Indigenous Love and Abundance. Um, and I'm on TikTok and Instagram and different spaces. And it's um, just a Eagle Shield. Um, and Red Rock is Red Rock Perkins. I guess I'm not sure if you what's your handle on all the other ones. Um, Probably the same. So yeah, so we just share videos and random things. Um, we like to be out on the land as well. And so, um, yeah, come follow us. You can reach out to us primarily on Instagram or through email. Um, my email is aeagleshield at gmail.com. Um, and we're just excited to be, hopefully, be in a community near you all. We're probably going to be in Lower Sioux sometime in um, May, I believe. Uh, we have birth gatherings on Stani Rock every fourth Tuesday of the month. And so you can follow us at on the Mini Wichoni Health Circle page. Um, and we just will continue to share what we can. Awesome. Thank you all so much. And that will conclude our winter camp for today. Yay. Uh-huh. Doksha. Doksha. Doksha.